Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Daly. I spent 20 years with United Press International, most of it with the old UPI radio network. And my favorite assignment was going on the road producing and hosting American Montage. It was an hour-long weekly program. Now here's an edited version of one of those shows. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's broadcast. During the time I lived in Washington, D.C., I found out that in my car at night, I could listen to one of the 50,000-watt stations out of Chicago, WBBM, an all-news station. All news except at that time at night, they turned their programming over to one of the nation's best experts on radio and television, Chuck Shaden, who presented a program of old-time radio. Eventually, I would see his name in the credits of a lot of documentaries dealing with broadcasting, including Ken Burns' Empire of the Air, The Men Who Made Radio, the story of the early days of radio. I finally caught up with Chuck Shaden at his headquarters in Chicago. He owns a store called Metro Golden Memories, where you can find just about anything relating to broadcasting. I asked Chuck how he first got interested in radio and TV. Well, my background in broadcasting is broadcasting the old-time radio shows. I uh, hadn't done any broadcasting before that. Uh, I had wanted to be in broadcasting. I always thought I wanted to be a radio announcer, but I didn't have the voice <laughs> back in the in the uh, in the fifties. Yeah, I'm afraid, even though I've trained myself a little bit, I wouldn't have worked in the thirties in radio at all. <laughs> well, the enunciation and the and the deep profound voice was very important back in those days, and I realized that I didn't have that kind of a voice for it, and so I just didn't bother with it anymore. I always liked the idea, though. I always liked showbiz, you know. And um, then I started collecting these radio shows after they were gone uh, from the airwaves. I grew up listening to the broadcast, but they were went off the air when TV came on the scene, and, you know. So I was searching around for some of those sounds, and I discovered a few of those sounds. In fact, I discovered that there were available some recordings of some of the radio shows. So I started gathering them up and making a collection of them got about a hundred shows and by that point I thought I had died and gone to heaven and I figured if I never found another radio show I'd be excited and happy about it. Well now just to leap forward you had a hundred when you started that was about 19 what? And about the middle 60s. And that hundred has now grown to what? Over 50,000 broadcasts. <laughs> Stop me before I, <laughs> I get some more you know. <laughs> but anyway I started gathering these shows and building a collection and sharing them with my friends. They'd come over on a Saturday night to our apartment and we'd listen. And that can go only so far, you know. Uh, radio is really not a group thing. Radio is a personal thing. You listen one-on-one. -on -one. Even if there are three people in the room, it's still kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing. So I knew that the best place for those radio shows would be the radio. I didn't know how to do it. I went to a little station in Evanston. And they said, well, you can, you can come on the air and broadcast some of these radio shows if you uh, produce the show. Well, that also meant, as far as they were concerned, producing a sponsor. Yes. Uh, so I produced a sponsor, a financial institution in Chicago, and they went on the air with me on a Saturday afternoon in May of 1970. I just played the shows and talked about them. And uh, over the years, I've learned that I didn't have to have the radio voice, but what I needed was the, uh, the ability to communicate my enthusiasm for all of this stuff. And that, to me, was very easy, because I'm just enthusiastic about the old radio shows. So I would sit and talk about the, on the air and talk about the shows, play the shows, quickly decided we needed more than just playing the radio shows. I mean, we, those of us who were listening and interested in it. So I started doing some interviews uh, with the radio performers. Back in 1970, there are a lot more of them around than there are today. And... Adding to that, uh, I would interview somebody, well, I was very fortunate in the first year or so to interview Jack Benny, who came to Chicago doing a, uh, uh, playing on the stage at, at, at a now long defunct uh, theater. And I got to interview him, and then I played some radio shows that he was talking about while we did the interview, and we had a theme now for the show, for that particular broadcast. So it was kind of fun doing that. And it just grew and grew and grew, and uh, here we are doing it, you know, and I've loved it. We're kind of like a nostalgia R Us here. Uh, we have some of the things you can find elsewhere, but you can't find all of this under one roof like uh, what we have here. And uh, that adds to the, to the fun of it. The nicest thing that anybody can say to us when they come into our shop is to say, I really like being here. I, I just feel very warm and comfortable being here. 
Uh, they comment that we, they like the way things are displayed and that the help is knowledgeable and friendly. But they really feel at home here because they're surrounded by, by George Burns and Gracie Allen and Jack Benny and Inner Sanctum and Clark Gable and Gene Autry and Roy Rogers and Lucy and Desi and uh, everybody. And it's just a, a wonderful, uh, it's a wonderful thing. It beats selling shoes for a living, you know, to have this kind of a store. Well, for example, here's a, a photo of Franklin McCormick. Now, if you didn't grow up in the Midwest, you don't know who he was, but he was on uh, WGN. Yes. And the Meister Brown Showcase. He had a voice so low, I dare anybody to, uh, <laughs> to imitate it. But I used to listen to him as a child growing up in southern Indiana. And at that time, I, I kind of thought I wanted to go into broadcasting. But even in retrospect, I don't think I've heard anyone who was as smooth and seductive, in a way, on the air as was Franklin McCormick. Well, he, was, he, was, uh, he, he did a lot more than, uh, than the all-night Meister Brow showcase. Before that, he was, he was the announcer on uh, Jack Armstrong, the All-American Boy. He did poetry readings. He was a staff announcer for WGN. He did all kinds of things like that. Of course, when he got to, by the time he got to the all-night show on WGN, all those other kinds of radio were gone, and he found a perfect niche for himself there. And he had that, as you say, a seductive voice. And it wasn't just Chicago and the Midwest, because WGN, with a 50,000-watt signal, was booming out to 38 states at night. And so people heard him all over the place, and he would do the torch hour, and, uh, you know, he would read the poetry, How Do I Love Thee, Let Me Count the Ways, and all of that sort of thing. So, yeah, we have a picture of uh, Franklin McCormick, and, in fact, we have some tapes of his uh, broadcasts here. You know. Now, you mentioned the fact that he was associated with Jack Armstrong. Let's, for a moment, for the younger audience, which thinks, well, doesn't even think of radio in terms of entertainment, uh, except maybe a rock concert, about the fact that there were shows that didn't come out of New York and didn't come out of Los Angeles. Uh, the Lone Ranger, the Green Hornet, came out of Detroit. The long-running Don McNeil's Breakfast Club came out of Chicago. Tell us a little bit about the, these regional programs that finally made it on a national network. Well, in many cases, the regional programs uh, started quickly, they started locally and then quickly went on the network, especially in Chicago, because Chicago was really the, uh, the central hub of the networks. And even programs that originated at, at a, uh, an independent station, like WGN, for example, were heard on the National Broadcasting Company. Uh, or WLS, they had, the national, they had the barn dance on WLS. And uh, the, a half hour of, the, of the, the barn dance, which was heard from 7 to midnight in Chicago, half hour of it went over to NBC for the whole country from coast to coast. We're talking, I guess, here about the basically the 30s. Uh, and into the, the early 40s. Uh, I remember uh, Norman Corwin on the, uh, the, the documentary Ken Burns did, Empire of the Air. He sure. said the golden age of radio was actually the shortest golden age of anything That's in the history correct. of the world. But there seems to be inherent in what you're saying the fact that there was, even though people understood that radio was a money-making venture, there was a respect they had for the medium. Oh, certainly. <clears throat> they felt, see, the people who, who ran the radio stations they were running it for a profit, but they also were running it because they felt they had an obligation to the, to the listening audience, and they would make sure that they would give the audience something that was quality. And many of the stations would set aside some time for very, uh, well, almost narrow casting, because they would, they would put on programs that they knew were not going to get the big audience, but they felt there was a segment of their audience who wanted this classical music concert every Sunday afternoon. There was a segment of their audience who wanted a talk by somebody. Chuck Shaden, <laughs> thank you very much. One of, the, one of the happiest things in my life, I think, was when I discovered you on radio at night. Could pick it up from Washington, D.C., and uh, I've, I enjoyed a lot and I learned a lot by listening. Thanks very much, Dennis. I appreciate it. And um, if you find us again sometime, don't touch that dial. Chuck Shaden, quite a gentleman with a huge collection of old-time radio shows that he loves to share. Not only that, as I mentioned, he's been called upon to help in numerous documentaries, and for a while he hosted the popular show When Radio Was. Chuck Shaden on this week's American Montage. <laughs> And there you have it, another edited episode of one of the American Montage programs prepared for the UPI Radio Network back in the 1980s and 90s. I'm Dennis Daly. Thanks for listening. Thanks for going with me this week. And check YouTube for more American Montage programs.